Hi everyone, welcome back. I've got another painting ready for you. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this Australian King Parrot. We're lucky enough to live on 25 acres and we're surrounded by state forest and we get so many different types of birds that come and visit our garden. We've got this big deck that wraps around our house and I love to sit on it and watch them. These king parrots come and feed on the seed pods of our evergreen ash trees. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this one. This is the reference photo that I took of the King Parrot. There's not a great deal of detail and I'll probably have to lighten it up in a few places, but I think it'll work okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is wash in the head. And the paper I'm using is Arsh's cold press paper. I've stretched the paper and I've attached it to a board. And this colour that I'm using is Windsor & Newton's Scarlet Lake. And I'll list all of the supplies that I used in the description of the video. So at the moment I'm just washing the Scarlet Lake all over his body. And the paper's damp. And the dampness of the paper just keeps all the paint edges soft. So I've dried it off with the hairdryer and now I'm re-wetting the head with some water. I just want to start deepening the colour. So I've got some more Scarlet Lake on my brush, but lots of pigment this time. I'm using a Da Vinci mop brush, and this is a size number two. So I've moved down his neck a bit, and now I'm dropping in some Windsor Lemon, and I just want it to blend with the Scarlet Lake. And I take this second layer of colour all the way down to his feet. And while that paint's still wet, I can drop in some Windsor Violet just to create some darker feathers down here. And I try not to fuss with it and I just let the water and the paint do their thing. And I keep an eye on it when it's drying. And then when it's dried a little bit further I can drop some water in. And this creates a watercolour bloom that gives the birds some texture. And this is how it looks after it's dried. So this is a good time to start to paint the eye. This is Windsor Lemon and I'm just painting it on dry paper. And after the lemon dries, I can paint some black onto the pupil. And I leave some white paper showing to act as a highlight. And I'm using my Da Vinci Nova brush here, I think it's a size zero. And this is a grey that I've mixed that I'm just painting around the outside edge. I mix grey from Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue. I'm painting the sear above his beak just with a little bit of gold ochre. And the bottom beak here is Windsor Violet, just painting on dry paper. I've just painted underneath his beak with some water and I'm now painting on some Scarlet Lake just to darken the area there. And this is a little bit of permanent magenta that I'm dropping in. I've just wet the top of his head and this is some more Scarlet Lake and I'm just deepening the colour here. And also down here on the back of his neck. So just some Scarlet Lake on damp paper. So I'm painting his top beak in now. I've dampened it with water and I've put some Windsor Lemon on it. And now I'm just using the Scarlet Lake again. Now I've got some more pigment on my brush. This is a Scarlet Lake, just deepening the colour. And this is a touch of lamp black on the tip of his beak. And I've just painted some Payne's Grey on his bottom beak. I just want a little bit of that violet to still show through along the edge. Now I want to take just a small amount of paint off that bottom beak just to let the paper show through again. So I'm just using my damp brush just to remove the paint. And now I'm washing in some Windsor Lemon on his wing. 
And this is going in as an underwash just to make the green a bit brighter when I put it on. So this is my setup here. I've got my paint beside me with a towel that I can wipe my brush on. I've got my water jar and my brushes. And this is where I'm up to. I've still got a long way to go. So the wing is dry now and I just want to paint this top section with some green. So this is permanent sap green and I'm painting on damp paper here. Now I'm dropping in some phthalo yellow green. And this is a touch of ultramarine blue that I'm dropping into the wet paint. Just dropping it in here and there. And then I continue on with the rest of the wing. So permanent sap green followed by a little bit of the phthalo yellow green. And then some ultramarine blue as well. And this is how it's starting to look. I always prefer to let my colours blend on the paper rather than mix them on the palette first. So I've got to start to deepen some of the colour on the red part. So I'm just painting some more of the Scarlet Lake onto his belly area. Painting on damp paper here. And now I'm dropping in some of the Windsor Violet. And it just blends with the red paint. So I'll leave that to dry and I'll move on down further. So some more Scarlet Lake on some damp paper here. And now I've got a touch of Windsor Violet on my brush. Just painting in the darker markings that I see. So I'm just dropping the Windsor Violet onto the damp paint. It's a little bit difficult to tell what colour these markings are because the photo that I'm using is so dark. So I've just gone on the internet and I've discovered that I think that there is sort of a dark green colour. So I'm changing this violet to perylene green which is a deep dark green colour. So for consistency I've just put some violet down here and now I'm painting over it with the perylene green. And then I can go a little bit darker with this Scarlet Lake as well. So just painting over the top of the dry paper now. So that area is dry now. I'm just removing my pencil lines with my eraser. So I'm just deepening the red area here with some more Scarlet Lake. And this is Perylene Green that I'm dropping in now. Just brightening the colour up down here and here as well. And a touch more of the perylene green again. So back up to the body here and I'm just dropping some more of the Scarlet Lake onto the damp paper just to deepen the colour in places. Just over on this side as well. And now I'm painting in the other wing with some permanent sap green. And then I deepen the colour with some perylene green. I'm just painting onto the damp paint here. Okay, so back over to this other wing. And again, this is the permanent sap green that I'm painting. So I'm just going to leave that to dry and I'm going to move down to the tail feathers now. And I just need to bring my drawing back in. And this is ultramarine blue that I'm painting onto the dry paper. A little bit more pigment now, just deepening the colour. Do the same thing on this one down here. And I run it down the side as well. And then I paint in the middle tail feather. And 
I'll drop some water in just to create some watercolour blooms that'll give the tail some texture. So this is Thala Yellow Green that I'm painting onto the flight feathers. Just painting on dry paper here. So then after it dried I drew in some pencil lines and I'm just wetting down this front flight feather with some water and I'm going to put some perylene green along the edge of it. So this is the perylene green and the water on the paper keeps those paint edges soft. It just stops me from painting hard lines that I don't want. So I get some nice sort of fuzzy lines rather than hard, sharp lines. And I just go all the way along them doing the same thing. So moving a little higher on the wing now and I'm just doing exactly the same thing on this group of feathers here. So I wet them first and then I just paint the perylene green on. So my paper is slightly damp here. I'll just add more water when it starts to dry out. And the paper's damp up here as well. So this is just the perylene green again. So just moving further up the wing and I'm just deepening the ultramarine blue that I put here earlier. So I'm just going to soften that with a bit of water now. I'll put a little bit up here as well. So I'm not really looking at my reference photo because there's not a lot of detail on the photo. Okay, this area here I'm painting with some Payne's Grey, just painting it on the dry paper. And now I'm deepening the colour with some more Payne's Grey and I've just switched to my finer brush. Same thing on this side. And now I'm using my brush just to take a bit of the paint off, just so that the paper will show through again and it won't look so flat looking. Okay, some Payne's Grey up on this long feather here. And I've switched to my liner brush just to get into the, all the edges. So the same thing on this side, some Payne's Grey on dry paper. And my liner brush just helps me tidy up the edges. I just want to run that ultramarine blue down a bit further. Okay, so I'm getting there. So I've just discovered that this area here wasn't quite right. So I've rubbed a little bit of the paint off and I'm just fixing up the side of these feathers with some Payne's Grey. Just the angle of the feathers wasn't quite right. Okay, so time for the feet now. I'm just painting some grey onto the toes. And this is the grey that I've mixed from ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So painting it on this other foot as well. And onto the claws. And then I dry them off with my hair dryer and I get distracted by the wing. So at the moment I'm just rubbing off just a little bit of paint just to create the impression of some feathers. So I'm just using my bristle brush just to gently remove the paint. So back to the feet now and I'm painting on damp paper here with some Payne's Grey. Just using my liner brush just to add a bit of detail. And this is some Windsor Violet that I'm just dropping onto the wet paint. Adding detail over here with Payne's Grey on damp paper. And dropping in some Windsor Violet again. Some more Payne's Grey. And 
blend a little bit more of my grey mix onto the claws. Now watercolour always dries lighter than what you expect. So I just want to deepen this colour again under here. This time I'm using permanent magenta. I'm painting on damp paper here. So this permanent magenta is a transparent colour. So the red will still show through, but it'll just deepen the colour. A little bit over here as well, but I've switched to my smaller brush so that I've got more control. And this is some permanent magenta up here as well, painting on damp paper. Now it's time for the branch. So I'm wetting this with water and this is permanent sap green that I'm painting on. And I just want the colour to be light at first. Switch to my liner brush and now I've got some perylene green. I'm just running it down the edge and letting it bleed onto the branch. And this helps to create form so that the branch doesn't look so flat. So I just lay the paint basically where I want it and I just let the water on the paper disperse the pigment just across the branch. Just get that nice soft fuzzy edge. And I do the same thing down here. So this green part of the branch is the new growth. So when I move further down the branch, the colour will change to more of a grey colour. So even though I took this photo in winter time and there were no leaves on the branches, the branches still had the newer growth as showing in green and the older woody growth was a sort of a grey colour. So I'd like to try and depict that in the painting. So now I'm switching to the grey mix. This is the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna that I mixed up. I'll just take it further on down the branch and then I drop in some Windsor Violet as well. And this is the Perylene Green and I'm just letting it bleed across the paper. So same thing here, the grey followed by the violet and then the greens. So a couple of last minute things on the bird and I'm just painting in the legs or the indication of the legs just with some of the Windsor Violet. So a little bit more of the permanent magenta here. Just going to soften that edge with my brush. And I think that's about it. So I'll just cut the tape away from the board. And then I can cut the tape off the paper. And there's my finished painting. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe, share this video with your painting friends and I will see you in the next tutorial.